All right, <clears throat> Church 14 Hub page. This is Rob. I'm sorry for the delay. Um, I don't really quite know how to explain what has happened the last few hours, but I'll try in a few words. Uh, but on the side of that, um, we couldn't meet in the building. Well, we could have, but things just didn't line up to where we could meet in the building tonight. Uh, but that's okay, you know, things happen for a reason, and with our speaking schedules, um, Millie is out of town ministering right now, and then when she gets back, I'm leaving to go to Pennsylvania to minister, um, so our schedule's been a little bit more intense, and we knew that that was kind of going to be the case, you know, through the fall uh, and the winter, but over the last few hours, I actually... I'm not feeling that great. I have a little bit of like an allergy thing going on, but um, I had planned to go live a few hours ago, but I was juggling things with our children and just trying to work it all out. And uh, I actually ended up, I, I ended up having a profound encounter with the Lord and it really took me by surprise. I have to be honest with you because um, I, I, I was studying, but, but I just, I was just looking over a few things, a few points that I wanted to make, like when I did the live, but I ended up in a whole different, you know, arena and the Lord just swept me away. And it was a really just, just a profound, <laughs> just a profound encounter. Um, so I'm not going to share more about that right now because like, I still really need to process it. And I think... When you're younger in the Lord, it's easy to, especially if you think you're called to be a prophet, which I, I never did think I was called to be a prophet. There's been times where the Lord's like, hey, speak out as a prophet right now, and then that's it. Go back into your cave. I'm like, okay. Um, but especially when for people who may feel like called to be a prophet and stuff, it, it's easy as soon as you feel like you got something from the Lord, just boom, just put it all out there, just... But, you know, it's important that you take time to process it. And this is something that I've learned over the last 23 years um, walking with Jesus. And take the time to process it. You know what I mean? Speak to your spouse about it. Pray deep on it. Take communion over it, you know. Um, speaking of communion, I, I wish I had some communion things, you know, here that we could do it together. But after the live stream, and, and I, I don't have that long, I probably only have 10 or 15 minutes. I'm sorry, guys. But um, make sure you go and take communion after this live stream, because I just really feel like I'm, just, I'm still kind of reeling from this experience that I had with the Holy Spirit. Um, and I can honestly say, you know, it's probably been probably about two years to the day since I've experienced something uh, like like that to that degree. So I, like I said, it, it really took me by surprise. I was not expecting it at all. Um, I was just kind of looking over two or three points that I, that I was trying to remember. And then I was going to come and get on the live stream, but I was just completely swept away by the Lord. And uh, I still feel like I can't even see straight <laughs> from it, to be honest with you. So... Um, if you guys are part of our Facebook group, Church 14 Community Online, uh, I, I may share more about it in that group here coming up. Um, we've been a little bit more quiet in the group lately because of, like I said, our schedule. Um, me and Millie will begin to go live in the group again together for family time uh, when our schedule lets up a little bit, which is probably going to be like December, um, maybe the end of November, something like that. Um, and, uh, I'm also going to be relaunching our bad doctrine detox classes in there. And I, and I want to say this, the precedent for church 14, and, and this is going back to about the end of 2017, the beginning of 2018. So, you know, we're talking six to seven years ago now. That's really crazy to think about. But when we were launching church 14, number one, it wasn't, and it's never been something specifically in one building on one corner somewhere, you know, um, it was, it's, it's a people, it, it's a people. And the specific instructions that the Lord gave to me, which my wife has known since the first second, she was the first one to ever hear it. And I was like, 
pray on this? What do you feel about this? You know, and so we feel like from day one, when the Lord gave me the Church 14 dream, he was very specifically targeting uh, Gen Z and millennials and some Gen X or millennial on the border like me. I feel more like a Gen Xer than I do a millennial, to be honest with you guys. Like, like most of when you look up those memes and those groups about Gen Xer versus millennial, I, I usually always have a lot more in common with the, with the Gen Xers than I do with the millennials. Um, but he was very specific about, about launching, about a mission to cultivate a people that are like, grace gospel warriors and it was all based on acts chapter 14 but the specific instructions that the lord gave me was rob start a social media group and at this point i think we had one just for our ministry partners and we would just do like missions updates and that was it but he and i so i'd never thought of doing this but he said start a social media group and he said start detoxing people from lies they've believed about me and about themselves and use the scriptures, go through the Bible. Um, so I always would call it like the Holy Ghost enema. <laughs> Excuse the, uh, the term, but that's really kind of what it was. And that was the precedent for Church 14. And people were not even like, they didn't even come to be part of our gatherings because we would do, we actually launched it in Charlotte, North Carolina, Fort Mill, South Carolina. That's where Millie is right now preaching. But we would do it in different hotels and then we would move it into homes and then we would go back to hotel ballrooms and we would meet in different places. Then we ended up taking it to like High Point, North Carolina, Atlanta, Georgia, Florida, you know, Pennsylvania, started taking it all over, Alaska, Hawaii, <laughs> California, Arizona. We we had a church fourteen work in Arizona, like a like a regular work there for a while um, in Tempe. But um, the the vision was always to be a mobile church movement, more of a people than a than a place. And and although we are blessed right now to have a place to gather in Myrtle Beach, which is amazing, you know I want to I want to I don't want to forget about cultivating the people online because you are the church i'm together collectively we're the church and the church um you know i i've spent the last few weeks really pondering a lot of things with the lord before i before i go public with with certain things and i just want to say i do not believe that the hey carolyn good to see you Glory. Um, I don't believe the church that Jesus came to this earth to establish is an institution. I don't believe it was ever meant to be an institution. Um, I believe scripture is clear about that. The church is to be a people. The church, the body of Jesus Christ is to be a people, not an institution. Now, there, there are ways to operate on the earth that look, you know, where you have to have organizational stuff in place and but even like business models and like, I'm just going to be honest with you guys. I can't, I can't rock. I can't rock it. I can't rock it. It's just, it nearly goes against every like bone in my body, you know, to try to franchise the church. Like it's some Starbucks, you know, it just doesn't, it just doesn't set right with me and it never, ever has. Um, and I know I'm built like a reformer, and I believe a lot of you guys are built like reformers as well. So, But the church is not an institution. It's the mystical body of Jesus. And it's only, it's only participated, we only participate in Christ through faith. And this whole thing is a walk of faith. It's, it's, an, amazing, it's an amazing walk. And, you know, it's, it's a blessing, but it's a walk of faith. And um, there's so much division right now. I mean, I mean, there's, there's always been, and it's just gotten worse and we're, Hey Kelly, good to see you. Uh, Hey Kathy, bless you. Thank you for tuning in from Lyman, South Carolina. Awesome. Um, it's only gotten worse guys, you know, and, and I've been the past few weeks I've spent really studying, um, deeply, uh, the early church, the Catholic church, Roman Catholic church, the Eastern Orthodox Protestantism, evangelicalism, fundamentalism, and then some other sects in, uh, as well. 
and just all the historical roots and, and what caused what and where things ended up. You know, with the Reformation, we're in we're in Reformation Month. Everybody knows October 31st is Reformation Day. And you know, for the past uh, seven years, I have like been a very strong advocate for Reformation Day. And, and I'm not saying I'm not anymore. I'm just, I'm just, you know, it's always good to take a step back and make sure things are accurate. And that's where I've been at. Um, just taking a step back and saying, you know what? What led to this reformation again? And is this what was intended? And there is good things, but what are the negative things that we may need refor we may need reformation from whatever reforming happened? You know, and when I look at the West and I look at all the division, guys, I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, here in the south of the US, <laughs> you you can call it the Bible belt all you want, but it is like it's a hard place for the gospel. And the reason being is because of the indoctrination. The reason being is because I would say of the wickedness in high places coupled with indoctrination. You know, in the north of the U.S., there's a lot more strongholds of um, man-made religion, traditional Christianity, you know. And in the south, there's like, there's just so much division and hate, even between the Christians, like, it is mind-boggling. It's absolutely mind-boggling to me, guys. Hey, Sam. Good to see you, bro. Thanks for joining me. Um, it's absolutely mind-boggling, and it, and it's sad. And sometimes I just want to, <laughs> I just want to say, like, is this really our brothers? Is like, are we really acting like this? <laughs> you know, it's just, it's just really mind-boggling. Um, and the body of Jesus should be a safe place. The body of Jesus should be a place that we participate, uh, uh, not a place, but, but a phenomenon that we participate in by faith. It shouldn't be some institution, but we're too busy judging each other. We're too busy, you know, all believing that we've gotten it, we've got it right. And um, I'll be the first to admit, I don't, I don't know it all. And I, I certainly don't have it all right, but uh, but who does, you know, but I'm on a journey and we appreciate you guys taking that journey with us, you know. Um, and when you when you back up and, and you talk to, you know, Orthodox scholars, Catholic scholars, Protestant scholars, they all have a lot to say about their their rivalries. And they all they all think that they've got it all right. And it's just. Some of it's just so ridiculous. I'm kind of over a lot of it. <laughs> um, but that's what I've spent the last month kind of really, really digging into. And, you know, around this time of year, I get a lot of messages concerning, of course, witchcraft and the occult. And I mean, rightfully so. I am an ex-warlock and I'm an ex-devil worshiper. Um, you know, for the first, like, probably 14, 13 years of the ministry. Um, I We focused like solely on our testimonies. Like Millie just preached her testimony everywhere and I preached my testimony everywhere. Um, and so a lot of the focus was on the evangelistic side of just bringing warlocks and witches to Jesus and stuff. And so it's not that that ceases, but when you start planning churches and discipling people and building communities like there's lots of other needs there's lots of other areas that need to be equipped and need to be connected together and um lots of moving parts and so i would say probably since i want to say around 2011 to 2014 i really started to focus a lot less on all the on all that stuff um not only because of all the moving parts, but also because I didn't want, I didn't want the, the foundation of the ministry to just strictly be built on talking about demons and, and witches and stuff like all the time. You know what I mean? Um, you know, the Apostle Paul has so much to say, like about seeing Jesus in people. And I was getting all these revelations because people would, people would always bring witches and warlocks to our meetings. And Honestly, like eight times out of 10, they would, they'd end up having some kind of radical encounter with Jesus. And it wasn't some, some Christian spell that I put on them or something. You know what I mean? It wasn't because of some certain 
formula or some prayer that I prayed, you know, that it's just that God was there and he, you know, he encountered them. They encountered him. Um, and 10 years ago, 2014, October 2014, I can't believe it's 10 years ago now, I put out a teaching called Ditch the Witch, Overcoming Witchcraft in 2014. And over the past few days, I have been going back over that and reading that. And, you know, it's, I mean, I still agree with pretty much everything I said. It was good. But as people, as human beings, you grow, you evolve. In fact, without progress, there is no growth. Progress is growth. Like, it just is. And there are so many believers that are afraid of progress and I feel like we're stuck. Sometimes we can be stuck in a rut. Now, that doesn't mean progressing beyond the gospel. It doesn't mean forgetting the holy traditions that were instituted by God, not by men. So I'm not talking about some humanistic ideology of uh, progressivism, but I'm talking about progressing in our understanding and progressing in our love. Like being made perfect in love. The Bible talks about perfected in love, being made perfect in love, being made perfect in unity. <laughs> Sorry, I keep like wanting to sneeze. The allergies have been crazy since all the weather changes. Um, I should have taken a Claritin. That just occurred to me. I should have taken a Claritin. Uh, but anyway, and so we should be a people who are progressing in love. In fact, I was reading 1 John 4, 8 before. Well, I was, I was reading 1 John 4 because there's a lot of good stuff in it. But 1 John 4, 18 says, I was reading 1 John 4, 8 as well. We'll get there. But 1 John 4, 18, there is no fear in love. In fact, I'm going to read it out of the Aramaic Bible. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear is by suspicion or uh, fear is suspicious of divine punishment or of torment. But he who fears has not grown up in love. So here's the growing up right here. They haven't progressed in the revelation of, of who God actually is as agape. There's a progression. Um, when Jesus began to be revealed to the apostles and the disciples, it blew every paradigm and every theology they had out of the stinking water. They didn't know what the heck to do with it. They, they were... They were freaking out. Peter, Paul, James, Andrew, John, all of them. And um, and you can even see throughout the New Testament some of their understanding of the things of God and things of Christ begin to shift a little bit, even with Peter. Like, he, 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 he was really rigid before, and he started to kind of, well, I guess I have to, you know, because <laughs> he's progressing, he's growing in the knowledge of Christ. And... Um, Anyway, so my first admonition to you guys is don't be afraid of growing. Don't be afraid of progress in your pursuit of Jesus. Um, and now that brings me to the subject of witchcraft. And, you know, I don't want to say a whole lot about it right now, but the number one thing is I'm trying to think of how much I should say this time of year. You know, it's the one time of year where my all my news feeds are guaranteed to be full of fear mongering, also of uh, valid warnings, but also fear mongering. And that one or two ex Satanists who said something once about witchcraft and about Halloween or whatever, and then the one time of year, the whole year. My newsfeed is full of like one or two quotes from those people every year. It's the same thing, you know, and um, I'm not trying to mock it. I, I'm just. Have you ever observed something like that has different? OK, there's different angles. You know, here is my Myrtle Beach coffee mug. You can observe this from different angles. It, it looks one way like this. And I don't want to. It is full, so I don't want to pour it out, but. It looks a different way from the top. Have you ever seen those NASA pictures of Jupiter and Saturn from far away? It's like, wow, it's beautiful. And then up close, it's like, whoa, that's 
mind boggling. And then now they have pictures from above the planet looking down and they have pictures from below the planet looking up. And it's like no one in history has ever seen anything like that. And it just completely boggles your mind, right? So right now, we are in a great deconstruction in Christianity worldwide, that we are in a great theological deconstruction. And I'm not saying it's all good. I'm saying a great as in big, a very big uh, global deconstruction. Um, and I think just like the Reformation, I think a lot of good potentially can come from it. But again, I think uh, caution needs to be exercised as well. And because of um, how we are growing in grace and growing in Christ, I think the Lord is stretching us to view things from a new angle. Um, that doesn't mean compromising your faith. It doesn't mean compromising with sin. It doesn't mean compromising, um, you know, with witchcraft or anything like that. But if we could view things from a different angle, it might blow other paradigms out of the water. Um, and so I specifically asked the Lord, what do you want me to share concerning witchcraft? Because I'll tell you what, the number one thing that I get is I get messages and I get emails all the time, especially this time of year, from people who they want my, and, and they're well-meaning, okay? It's not, it's not that they're doing anything wrong, but they want my formulas to counteract the witchcraft that they are experiencing in their life. Like, what do I do? How many times do I have to plead the blood of Jesus? You know, almost like what steps can I follow? And herein lies the, the problem. Herein lies the problem because I believe the Lord wants us to begin to view it from a different angle. But in order to view it from a different angle, we're going to need a, a pretty good detox ourselves. And I will help you with that. Not that I have all the answers, but but any way that I can help, that's my specialty. I would love I love to help people with that. So join our our Church 14 community online group, and I'm going to begin our Big Bad Doctor Detox again this week, okay, in that group. Um, still seeking the Lord on a couple of things. But secondly, what it's going to require... Uh, seeing things from a different angle, it's going to require a, not a reinventing of the wheel, but a, a wrecking ball. It's going to require a wrecking ball and the, the building of a fresh foundation the right way. Number one, number two, Hey Lee, number two, Lord help me. I didn't want to come on here and say all this, to be honest with you. I've been wrestling with the Lord about it for hours. <laughs> uh, so number two, it's going to require us uh, participating by faith in the, in the things of God in a way that we, we maybe have never stepped out in before. And so I want to address... I'm addressing kind of seasoned Christians first, but I also want to address people that are watching and you might be like, you know what? I identify as pagan or I identify as Wiccan or I identify as Levian Satanist or, or whatever it might be. I identify as Temple of Set. I identify as, you know, Masonic, whatever. Okay. Um, and, and, and not to group Masonic, I'm not trying to say that's just the, I'm just putting examples out there that are, that are either loosely or have been identified as Christian or are, or, or have been identified as anti-Christian. Okay. In the, in the history of the world. Um, so I want to address you guys too, in a sense. And, uh, here's what I want to say. Witchcraft I'm going to tell you what it can do. It's not superstitious. It can be superstitious, but it is not solely superstitious. It is real. It exists. Yes, it's real. I spent years doing Ouija boards, 
summoning spirits, having seances. I got so many people. <laughs> um, so many people converted to witchcraft back in the day because of my, um, efforts because of my efforts. And, uh, you know, it, I felt like I was on top of the world for a second f back then, but, uh, but I never had peace. I didn't have any peace. I, it was always like, am I going to follow the right thing? Am I going to do it right? Am I going to anger the spirits like I didn't I never had peace you know now it can be like that in religion too and you know if you're stuck in like a dead religious rut uh it can be the same way am I doing it good enough for God is God gonna get mad at me am I gonna lose my salvation am I gonna this am I gonna that blah 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 so really it's it's like to me it's one in the same darkness you know like a religious darkness where you're stuck in your own works and you're stuck in legalism and you're stuck in and like witchcraft, it's it's all rebellion against grace, you know. <laughs> like, um, but I'm gonna tell you what witchcraft can do. Witchcraft can manipulate energy. That's all it can do. That's all it can do. Now, yeah, that it's it's serious. I mean, the scriptures in the scriptures, it's clearly serious, but it can only manipulate energy. Okay, so it makes complete sense that there were tons of tribes of people in the world that were never introduced to God, the spirit, God, the father, the word. And so they learned to manipulate energies. Now, I have a whole portion about this in my book, The Big Bad Doctrine Detox, and we, we talk about it a lot in there. But I call it um, accessing secret wisdom or the, pos uh, the possession of secret knowledge, the pursuit of hidden knowledge, things like that. Um, but it also makes perfect sense that when you come face to face with the creator of the cosmos, you would realize, okay, I don't need that stuff anymore. Like, what do I even need that for, right? And I think that's the case in Acts chapter 19, verse 19, where they burned all the sorcery books. You see, it wasn't, it wasn't some religious showdown. It, it wasn't, Elijah on Mount Carmel about to slit the throats of all the false prophets. It was people having radical encounters with Jesus and realizing, I don't need this anymore and I don't want to be tempted with it anymore. So let's just get rid of it. We don't need it, right? Which is cool. Okay, now I'll talk about that more in a minute. Witchcraft can only manipulate energy. And so listen, for those of you that are believers, you don't have to fear it. Even in October, even on October 31st. And, and you know what? I'm just going to put this out there. I am not going, me and Millie are not going to tell you what you and your family should or should not be doing when it comes to Halloween. We're not going to tell, we're not going to do it. The Holy Spirit in you can lead you and people are going to have different convictions. But I can tell you this. I can tell you this. There's a whole lot more manipulation in legalistic dead religion than there is in kids wearing a plastic mask. I mean, sometimes, and, and, and this is where I say a lot of times I'll say things and people, they expect, you know, they ask me something and then I respond and then they don't like what I say. But the thing is, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to bring you a different angle of it. Because, see, with people, it's always going to be, is it good or bad, 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 good and evil, good and evil, good and evil. But I want to bring you a different paradigm of life. What brings life? And what is life giving? You know what I mean? Um, so I'm going to have to go in a minute because I hear my kids. I got to get them ready for bed. Um, Witchcraft can manipulate energy, but, but love is the source of all energy. There would be no energy without God who is love having created that energy. So 1 John 4, 8 says God is love. And that is the Greek word agape, agape, which means, it actually means he, his affection prefers you to be affectionate toward I just did a whole word study on it today. I mean, it's, it's like mind boggling. Love is the source of all energy. 
So outside of covenant with God, can someone access energies when they learn the reality of the spirit world? Sure. Yeah, they can. And if you want to know more specifics about that, it would come down more to principalities and powers. And I do have a teaching on that. I think it's on YouTube. I think it's on our YouTube channel. But if you're interested in it, just uh, send us a message and if and when we see it, we will try to get you that. But I have a whole teaching on principalities and powers and how it, how it operates and all that. But Jesus is the head of principalities and powers, it says in the book of Colossians. So believers should not be concerned about this stuff. About Now, it doesn't mean you don't warn people. It doesn't mean you don't, you know, but I'm talking about we shouldn't be scared. We shouldn't have fear of witchcraft. Okay, now... Um, witchcraft can only manipulate energy, but love is the source of all energy and God is love. Perfect love casts out all fear. We just read that in the scriptures in first John, perfect love casts out all fear. Now let's take it one step further. This would include perfect love. When you are made perfect in love, you're not going to fear energy being manipulated against you whatever form or fashion that might look like. Have we had people astral project into our room? Yes. Have we had people, have, I don't want to really get into all of it, but have we, has it, has everything in the book been done at us? Yes. But when fear is made, uh, when love is made perfect in you, you're not going to be held bondage by a fear of energy that is able to be manipulated against you because love is the source of all energy and God is love. Therefore, Jesus is the head of principalities and powers. Now, I do want to just exhort you for a minute. Technically, uh, we're supposed to discern spirits, not aesthetics, okay? And... Someone's aesthetic could have absolutely nothing to do with where they're at. I mean, it could, but it also could not have something to do with their spiritual walk or, you know, if someone just has their nails painted black, you guys have seen me with my nails painted black. You guys have seen me with eyeliner on that. There could be someone in a church every Sunday dressed up to the nines and they're full of manipulative witchcraft and they have never painted their nails black and they've never worn a pentacle around their neck. Do you get what I'm saying? So I think as believers, especially post reformation, we need to be a lot less superstitious. We need to be sensible and we need to not be fearful. We need to be uh, fully persuaded in our own hearts. And you know what? Jesus didn't burn the witches. He drew them to himself. He didn't burn the witches. He drew them to himself. And you know what? He still doesn't burn witches. He draws them to himself. Now, I have many stories that I could share with you guys of people who were radically overcome by the love of God, who were in the deepest part of their journey into the occult. And it took one encounter with God. And it wasn't even a big deal. You know what I mean? Now, there are times people need to be have spirits cast out of them. There are times where they need to be warned to their face. Hey, like you, I'm telling you, like you're going a bad direction. Now, I can't take this a whole lot deeper, but here's what I want to say to believers. Don't counteract witchcraft with earthly weapons, but also with earthly formulas. People are like, how many times do I need to go into the throne of heaven to counteract this witchcraft coming against me into the throne room or into the courtroom or, into, you know, I feel like it's just funky. It, it doesn't like Jesus is our great intercessor. Um, people are like, how many times do we need to plead the blood of Jesus, you know, over that over like, should I spray in graffiti blood of Jesus against you over, the, you know, over the pen, a pentagram or whatever. And we don't need to counter. Here's the thing is like, Jesus shows us how to handle things like a son. When spirits needed to be cast out, he casted them out. And it, but the thing is, it wasn't some big show so that he could then give a 12 point, you know, 
dissertation on on demonology like it 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 just i feel like there's you know what in deliverance here's the thing jesus is a deliverance guy so everyone is like i'm called to deliverance ministry i'm called to deliverance i i spent years saying the same stuff i would have literally people call me from the microphone Robert Ozzy, deliverance needed in aisle seven. Rob <laughs> I mean, no, but really, I I'm actually being serious. Like, and I would go and I would just Rah! get those demons, you know. And um, the Lord showed me a more excellent way. Here's the thing. Jesus shows us how to deal with things as sons and daughters, as actual children of God. He shows us how to handle it. So here's the thing. The gospel is the beautiful message of the reconciliation. He calls everyone. He draws everyone to himself. Everyone's in, invited. Everyone's included in his love, which or not. But here's the thing. No one's welcome to disrupt the party. You know, God sets a very clear boundary in Revelation. He says, the gates never shut. The gates of the city never shut day or night. But no unclean thing is permitted to enter it. And then he says, what? What does Jesus say? Come to me, I'll make you white as snow. I'll, I'll, forget, uh, I'll, I'll, tell, I'll tell your sins as far as the east is from the west. Like the whole Bible is full of these kind of promises, guys. So I did a really, really, really interesting study. And it would probably be a two to four hour thing. So I'm obviously not going to do that right now. I did a, my first ever study on what all of the early church fathers had to say about witchcraft and how it was dealt with. And I found a lot of really interesting things. Um, the first 1300 years of the church, which predominantly obviously was the Roman Catholic Church for a lot, for a good amount of, for all, pretty much all of that. Um, it was dealt with very differently than it was even post Reformation. I found that really interesting. And so, but the early church fathers had a lot to say about witchcraft. And uh, I, I might I might read you one or two of the quotes here, but obviously I'm not going to have time. I did a, a full exhaustive study from the first stages of the early church all the way to like, you know, just a couple hundred years ago um, when it came to witchcraft, sorcery, divination. And, you know, God has so much to say about uh, so much to warn against when it comes to divination, witchcraft, sorcery in the Old Testament, especially. So some of you that maybe are drawn to it, you might be, and, and I'm not, and it, maybe even some of you believers find yourselves being drawn to it sometimes. And there's no condemnation for you because some of the early church fathers actually talk about that because some of them were even at times like wondering about it. Okay, so... I'm, there's no, I'm not saying there's condemnation for you, but for those of you that maybe are drawn to it, maybe you're not a believer and you're watching this and you're just like, this is ridiculous. I'm a Wiccan. It's just a religion of the earth. Like, why is, you know, I'm going to, I'm just going to, in a minute, I'm, I'm going to give you the answer. I'm going to tell you the answer. Um, the why, why? Is it so condemned by God? Why are we so evil? You know, now I'm speaking to believers, but I'm also speaking to current people that identify as witches, warlocks, Wiccans, as someone who has been there, as someone who has been there. I have been there. I was there. Okay. And I love all you guys and I have no personal qualms with you at all. I just have a different angle of the gospel and I believe sooner or later you're going to come into it because it's just so good. Okay. Um, okay. I was going through all my different study Bibles. And this is the last, probably one of the last things I'm going to share with you guys tonight. I was going through one of my study Bibles. I was reading Acts 19 and I found this really amazing uh, footnote. And it says this. Now, Acts 19 and specifically 11 through 19 is where the occultists are converted. I'll read it to you real quick. God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul so that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to the sick 
and the diseases left them and the evil spirits went out of them. Then some of the itinerant Jewish exorcists took it upon themselves to call the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits. Did you hear that? Itinerant Jewish exorcists. This is straight from the original language. Itinerant Jewish exorcists. You guys probably didn't even know that was a thing. So in our Bad Doctrine Detox Bible program, I explain the history of Judaism and exorcism. And honestly, it's not much different than the history of Islam and exorcism. It was a really big deal. All right. This is why I'm trying to say like some of our modern ideas of darkness and evil. It's just silly. It's just silly. It's like because back then it was big business. And you know what? Today, it's still big business with Halloween and everything. It's big business. It's like the demons hide in the churches half the time more than anything. All right. Um, the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. Who are you? Then the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them, overpowered them, and prevailed against them so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. This became known to all the Jews and Greeks dwelling in Ephesus, and fear fell on all of them, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. And many who had believed came confessing and telling their deeds. See, God even used the fact that they all got afraid. He worked that together for their good to bring them to an encounter with him. But he didn't keep them in fear. That fear of punishment, of torment. Hey, I, don't kill the messenger here. Don't shoot the messenger, but... Western evangelical fundamental, fundamentalism, what is like one of the foundations of it? Fear of torment. I mean, the way the gospel is presented, 70%, 80% of the time, fear of torment, at least in the last few decades. Maybe it's shifting now, I don't really know. Um, and I'm talking about specifically fear of torment in hell, which you don't really see the disciples presenting the gospel that way, like at all in the New Testament, hardly at all. I mean, in Jesus, who did he threaten with Gehenna? The religious leaders. <laughs> okay. Um, many who had believed came confessing and telling their deeds. Also, many of those who had practiced magic brought their books together, burned them in the sight of all, and they counted up the value of them. Um and it totaled 50,000 pieces of silver. So the word of the Lord grew mightily and prevailed. They didn't go build a ministry on having mass burnings of paraphernalia and mass deliverances. I, I said what I said, man. It's just, I don't know. If Here's the thing. If that's the way you want to steward, um, if that's the way you want to steward what God, you know, the ministry that God has given you, that's your prerogative. People are doing that right now. There's tons of mass deliverances going on for Halloween and mass baptism. I'm sorry, mass mass burnings. And now, what did I do when I got when I came to Jesus? You want to know what I did in 2001? I that's exactly what I did. I had a bonfire and I burned all of my you know uh, stuff, the Necronomicon and all the altars and all. I burned all of it. I burned it all. But it was something personal for me. You know, um, it was what I felt like needed to be done to sever soul ties I had with those things. So I'm not trying to bash anybody. I'm just saying I don't want to make a big business out of this deliverance thing either because it's not the point. Deliverance is not the point. It's it's fruit of the point, but it's not the point. You get what I'm saying? Um, they, they, they didn't advertise it and... It just, it happened because so many people discovered a more excellent way. They were, they didn't have any peace doing the black magic. They had spirits following them. They were being tormented. Deep inside, they were tormented souls and they wanted freedom. And then this happened and God used it all together and Jesus was glorified. But it wasn't, it wasn't the point. It was just fruit that flowed out of the ministry of Jesus. All right. Um, thank you, Tiffany. I appreciate that. So let me read you the footnote now. Here's what it says. The miracles performed here in Acts chapter 19 follow those performed by Christ 
and show that Christ lives and works through his followers. Of particular significance is the way physical objects, handkerchiefs, aprons, etc. I'm going to stop right there. In witchcraft, physical objects are most usually always used in the hexes and in the spells. I know because I used to do them. Again, and, and generally, they were always done against somebody, against a person, so that they would die or the same, they would suffer misfortune or whatever it was, okay? Um, I love this because God even redeems this idea that physical objects um, can only be used by demons. No, they can be used by God. You know what I mean? And I, so I just love this. Kind of like the Urim and the Thummim in the Old Testament, the rocks that would like light up and stuff when God would speak. That's awesome too, and it's biblical. But this is a cool New Testament example, okay? Now, I, this is what I love the most. It says, of particular significance is the way physical objects became instruments of grace when touched by people of great faith. I just want to declare this over you guys. Physical objects will become instruments of grace when touched by you full of faith, full of the faith of Jesus. And if you are practicing witchcraft or if you've been teetering in both, if you've been doing Reiki healings and also kind of still studying the Bible, trying to figure out where you're at. OK, I'm talking to you right now. I'm telling you right now, Jesus is the more excellent way. And he's going to make a way for you to let go of that stuff for good. And I'm not condemning you and telling you you better or else. I'm telling you, as we mature in the fullness of his love, you're going to realize there's no other way. There's no other way. Okay? Um, because where in witchcraft, something would be an object of hex and of, um, of damning, God uses objects as instruments of grace. And that's not it. That God works both through his saints and through created objects shows that creation itself is being renewed, restored, and reconciled. I'm going to tell you guys something right now, man. There is so much juicy revelation on this. Because the gospel is the message of the reconciliation. The ministry of reconciliation. And when we insert ourselves in the process and begin manipulating energies and we put a barricade, we put a big block in the road in this beautiful journey of reconciliation and restoration. All things in heaven and earth are being reconciled to, to God. Jesus has already reconciled all of us and the more we do stuff like this, the more we're literally just putting ourselves in the way of this beautiful restoration and reconciliation. And we're saying, I can do this myself. No, you can't. You can't do it yourself. You can manipulate energies maybe with by the use of some telekinetic or some psychic stuff or some demonic stuff. But that's as far as it's going to go. And you're not going to have peace. You're going to end up just being tormented. <laughs> you're going to end up wanting and needing more and more and more power. And you're not going to, you're not going to be fulfilled. I'm telling you because witchcraft is a lie from the devil. I didn't say it's not real. I just said it's, it's a counterfeit. It's a lie from the devil. The reason it's a lie from the devil is because people think it's going to help them attain what they wish, but it's actually going to come against their own reconciliation process. It's actually going to thwart them being reconciled in their own hearts and minds in a more excellent way. Okay. So I'm going to close it up with this as witchcraft is the pursuit of hidden knowledge, whether it's astrological, whatever it is. Listen, as believers, Colossians chapter one, verses 26 and 27 says this, the mystery that has been kept hidden for ages and generations but is now disclosed to, the, to God's people is Christ in us, the hope of glory. We participate in this mystery by faith, by the faith of Jesus. He is the mystery revealed. And that's why any other pursuit of hidden knowledge, it's just a counterfeit. 
It's, it's a big distraction. And there's a lot of oohs and ahs when we realize, oh my gosh, did that actually work? Yeah, energy can be manipulated. Yeah, people can get information from unclean spirits. Yeah. But you know what? The, the actual mystery of the ages is not going to be something that we constantly have to try to figure out the rest of our lives. It's going to be something we participate in by faith. And then our lives are going to become instruments of grace. And we're not going to need that stuff anymore. I'm telling you, you're not going to need it anymore. You're not even going to want it anymore. Because Jesus is just too good. <laughs> okay. Um, I want to read you one, one quote from... Amen. And by the way, I... I I also have been thinking about all this because I've had messages from people. Hey, you know, would would we be welcome to worship with you uh, if we practice this or that or if we do psychic readings or we do tarot readings or whatever? And I said, here's the thing, you know, Jesus is not partial. He loves everyone with an everlasting love, but you can't disrupt the party. So what are your intentions? My intention is for you to encounter God. Not to convert you to some institutionalized system. My intention is for you to encounter God. And then we can start a journey together. We can just start a journey together. That's really where it's at. Um, okay, I have, I'm trying to find this one last quote and then I definitely need to go. <laughs> um I hope this is blessing you guys. Amen. Thank you, Tiff. There's so many good ones. I'm telling you guys, there's so many good ones. I just, I might as well read all of them at the time. I'm going to sit here looking for the one, <laughs> the one that I was looking for. Um, can't find it right now it's a bummer i had it i had it on my phone but i'm actually live streaming on my phone right now so um i'm gonna look one more time oh i found it okay here it is this this is the one quote i want to leave with you guys right now this quote is from the venerable ephraim the syrian and here's what he says beware of making potions casting spells telling fortunes making storages talismans or wearing those made by others for these are not storages, they are bonds. That's it. But it's so powerful because what he's saying is all of these things that promise you a better life and your best life now and the power that you're looking for or the wealth or the love that you're looking for or that that person will, be, will die as you wish or whatever, all of these things, when this is what you're focusing your time and energy on, they're not actually charms and enchantments. They are bondages. They are chains of bondage. But you see, the enemy wants people to see it the other way around, where people who believe in God and live holy lives and want to see righteousness are in bondage to that stupid religion. It's actually the other way around. It's actually the other way around. We want to see people free. We want to see people uh, walking in unity and in union with their creator and free of all that bondage of false promises. So while, but, but what's tricky about it is there's a lot of false promises, but there's energy manipulation attached to it. So there's a lot of oohs and ahs. I mean, because like crystals have healing properties and this type of thing has healing properties. And so, so it's very easy for some people to just get, go all in and be like, oh my gosh, this is it. This is the answer to all my problems. But you spend five years in witchcraft or 10 years, you're going to find out it's not the answer to all your problems. Now, there may be some Wiccan priests or priestesses that disagree with me. And not all, everyone considers themselves witches either. They would just say I'm a, of the earth or whatever. There's, there's tons of different, you know. But what I find really interesting is A majority of them that I have seen are much more peaceful than the Christians are toward each other. Why is that? Why is that? And you know what? I I mean, it needs to change. It needs to change. Um, 
there is a more excellent way for both parties. <clears throat> I'm going to read that one more time. Beware of making potions, casting spells, telling fortunes, making storages, talismans, or wearing those around your neck made by others. These are not storages. They are bonds. In other words, uh, they're chains. They're chains. There's so many other places I could go with this right now, but I got to go, guys. But I love y'all. So let's do this right now. Right now. Lord, in Jesus' name, I just thank you for everyone that's watching. First of all, thank you so much for all the believers. Lord, help us grow. Help us be perfected in love. Help us be perfected and dwell together in unity. And Lord, I also pray for everyone else that's watching who maybe doesn't know where they stand or what they believe. And Lord, if they're being pricked to the heart right now about anything that I've said, Lord, I pray you would grant them repentance right now. That doesn't mean you have to go to confess at your to your local priest that who you don't know. You can just confess to God right now where you are. Say, you know what? I'm being convicted about this right now. I feel like I opened doors that I really didn't want to open. And I would like those doors to be closed right now in Jesus name. Father, we thank you. Just say, Lord, I have opened doors I shouldn't have opened. Close them for me right now by faith in Jesus. Jesus, I believe in you. And I want to start this journey with you right now. And not just as another healer or not just to add to my collection of deities, but in you, all things consist. In you, all things were made. You are the source of all energy in the cosmos and the universe. And that's why I place my trust in you. Show me a more excellent way that I don't have to manipulate energies, Lord, because you're not a manipulator. You're a prayer answerer. Lord, you endue us with power from on high, with, with, uh, with godliness to live above reproach. Lord, that we don't even need all these man formulas and superstitions and manipulative energies and properties. And we just need you. Fill us with the power of the Holy Spirit in Jesus mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, God. Yes, God. I'm telling you guys, man, I, I had a, I had such an encounter with the Lord a few hours ago and I'm still reeling from it. I'm still real. I, I'm honestly, I still feel some of that same, like it's a tangible, a tangible feeling I can feel. It's just so amazing. Um, Ooh, thank you, Lord. Now, listen, there's no condemnation for you, okay? And even if you're not ready to let go of it yet, I don't want to say, oh, that's fine, everything's dandy. But I will say, I understand. And let's walk together. Let's walk together, all right? Um, and by the way, you have the right to decide what kind, you know, who you want to run with, you know, whether it's other believers that are just not representing Jesus the way you feel called to represent him, whether you just have a different angle, you don't have to just run with someone else because they're a Christian. You love them, but it doesn't mean you don't, ha you don't have to be best friends, you know, same thing with, um, let's say Christians with pagans and Christians with, you love them, you extend the hand of fellowship. You say, hey, I'm willing to walk together. Let's discuss things of faith or whatever. But that doesn't mean you have to You have to even have some unhealthy compromise. You don't have to just to love people. You know what I mean? Um, okay, so I keep thinking of more things I want to share. But uh, I know I, I can't do that right now. But anyway, Father, just let us be washed by your presence in Jesus' mighty name. Clean and pure like little children. Thank you, God. Teach us your ways just like little children in Jesus' name. All right, guys, I love y'all. Um, 
of course, I always want to give you the opportunity to give, whether, you know, Church 14 is where you regularly give tithes and offerings or wherever that might be, you know, bless them, do it unto the Lord. If you feel led to give here, um, you can go to church14.com and click the give button right now. I want to thank you to all of our friends and partners around the world who continue to make it possible for us to, you know, run this race together. Um, uh, if you want to give by Venmo, Cash App, Zelle, PayPal, all those are options. Just go to church14.com, click the give button. You can also give by debit card, credit card. And I want to ask you guys by faith right now, if you would consider becoming a monthly partner. Uh, one of the ways you can do that is you can just subscribe here on Facebook. There's like a subscription button on the live streams. You could do that um, and whatever the Lord tells you there. Or you can sign up as a monthly partner on our website, church14.com. Click the give button and there's a form at the bottom. You can put in whatever amount you feel led and you can um, become a donor like a monthly giver that way. And we just pray for you guys in Jesus name. We pray for a thousand fold increase. We pray, Lord, that everything they put their hands to prospers, that every need is provided in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, that you are even sending people to give into their bosom and into what is dear to their heart, Lord, that uh, they would not go without, but they would have everything they need to do what you've called them to do as well as they give by faith in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. All right. Woo, man. I am like really deep in my spiritual, not spiritual, in my theological feels right now. So um, I'm feeling like, I'm feeling like six hour long Bible studies and stuff, you know. Anyway. All right, guys. Love y'all. Um, next week, I'm ministering in Pennsylvania. If anybody's in the uh, Western PA region, I look forward to seeing you at Light and Life Church in Dubois, Pennsylvania. And then um, it's called Taking Back the Night Conference. Church 14 community will be happening here. It's going to be led up by Stephen and Aaron Graham and Pastor Lee Thomas. Um, and then uh, uh, October 31st, we've got a Reformation celebration happening here in Myrtle Beach. Would love to see you guys. And then on November the 2nd, I believe it is, which happens to be All Souls Day. We're going to talk more about that as time goes on. Um, I will, uh, our building is not available because there's another event happening. So I'm actually going to be teaching online again. So, uh, well, we're going to, I'll probably have some people over the house, you know, who can't go to that event because it's a woman's event, women's event, but then I'm also going to make sure to do some online stuff. So we'll keep you guys informed. All right. Love y'all.